Welcome to Awareness to Action, where you'll discover how possibilities become reality with me, Joan Marlowe. Join me and my amazing guests for powerful stories about those world-shifting aha moments. You know, the ones that catapult you into action and transform the way you walk through the world. Yes, you can live your life with purpose and passion. Maybe you aren't there yet, and that's okay. This show will take you behind the scenes and walk you through how other people just like you were called to transform their lives and the journey they embarked on to get there. The first step to taking life-changing action or any action at all is awareness. Maybe that's why you're here. Join the movement to create and live your purpose and passion while embracing your authenticity. Awareness to action starts now. Hi, I'm Joan Marlowe and welcome to Awareness to Action, where we look at aha moments and we move them with um, great speed to make great changes in our lives. And I'm very excited today. Leah D'Ambrosio is is her second visit with me on this show. And this show actually was born from the work that we did in planning our earlier show, which was many, many months ago. The earlier show that we did together had to do with um, working with our animals in the world of meditation and looking at how we synchronistically learn to learn from our animals as much as they learn from us and how we help them heal and they help us heal along that line. So in this conversation that she and I had during our initial planning stages for that show, we got off sidetracked. I know that's shocking. We went off a whole other route and we talked about people that have difficulty learning how to meditate and people have problems with that and they can't get themselves calmed down. We also threw in some words about the, the, the importance of having our thoughts clear and our thoughts because th- thoughts are things and that's vitally important as well as words that we use are powerful. So it's vitally important for us that we have our thoughts in a certain mode, we have our words in a certain mode. So that brings about our health and our well being in oh so many ways. So from there, I, I went back and looked at our notes and we looked at all kinds of things related to women. And we tossed around the idea of the fact that women just don't feel like they're empowered and they, they, they feel that they aren't enough and they just aren't sure of themselves. And so again, if we combine these thoughts and these words to help them have those tools so that they can be their best self, that's what we're all about. My role in this world with Peaceful Easy Healing as well is to help people create their best lives. And Leah is right there alongside me. And again, utilizing animals as well as looking at the good in so many ways. But some of the words, I pulled out those old notes from when we talked many months ago. And we looked at words like your future self. Who do you want to be as your future self? We also utilized phrases like putting it out in the universe. Now for Leah and myself, and I think probably lots of people that listen in on Transformation Talk Radio, they get that idea, but other people might not. And it's it's a collective thought. It's truly a way, if you might've heard about the law of attraction, that like attracts like and positive attracts positive. And that's what this is all about, sending it out there. And so we're, we're getting, this is all the pieces and parts that we're doing to try and get into alignment so that we can live our best lives. And so we look at things like meditation. And when we, when Lee and I talked many months ago, we looked at going from sadness, all using meditation, sadness to happiness, overwhelm to confidence, suspicion to trust. Those words held more meaning for me today as I was reading them than they even made then, because I just recently got back. I I was actually at Leah's house staying for a couple of days, thank you so much, in Portland, Oregon. I attended a wellness and yoga retreat where I was with one of my longtime girlfriends, but I also met 10, 11 other amazing, amazing women. And when you pull women together, 
the stories are the same in so many ways. The bottom line many times is the same. The themes are the same. The stories might be a little bit different. But again, it comes out with sadness, happiness, trying to find happiness through somebody else, but not looking at yourself. Also looking at that element of overwhelm. Women that just have way too much to do in their lives and they don't know how to see them, them, themselves clear, especially to look at that amazing element of self-care that is so vitally, vitally, vitally important for us to be able to create the life that we wanna live. And as well as that suspicion to trust. That trust word, those five little letters, are very, 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 very powerful. And so many women have lost their trust in their dreams, et cetera. So in today's show, we are going to be looking at, and again, this was, we, we chatted a little bit this morning already. It's all about coming into your own, all about women coming or anybody coming into their own. And what Leah wrote back to me was, we are all born with an incredible unique light, but life throws crap on it. It's there, bright as ever, but no one can see it, even us, because it's covered. This is all about a simple technique to cover your beautiful light and letting it shine with pride. So I'm very excited to welcome Leah DeBrosio again. And again, a little bit about Leah. Leah uh, spent her entire life with, with and around animals from horses, dogs, and cats, and fish to the more exotic species as tigers, snakes, and raptors. In 07, her love of animals and desire to serve them led Leah to discover Kathleen Prasad and her unique method of animal Reiki. Kathleen and Leah had immediate synergy and from their shared desire to help shelter animals along with Kathleen's vision, in 08, they founded the Shelter Animal Reiki Association, which is called Sarah. Since that time, they have grown Sarah from 28 members to over 400 members who have helped support thousands of animals through the power of meditation. So we circle back around now to that power of meditation. Thank you again, Leah, for being here with me today. Thank you so much, Joan. It's always a pleasure. I just love the synergy we have together. And for, thank you so much for having me as your guest again. <laughs> <That's exciting. laughs> yeah, re repeat performance, repeat performance. Yay. <laughs> so, you know, we spoke a little bit about some of these facts about thoughts or things and again, keeping the mind positive because where the mind goes, the body follows. That's very, very, very important. But sometimes when life is throwing that crap at you, it's difficult to keep dodging and some of that crap is going to hit you and you lose your light. And when you lose your light, it's not only hurting you, but it's also hurting the people around you, especially women, those nurturing women that take and gravitate to helping others. You, you, and you can't, we all know also that you can't help someone else unless you help yourself in some way, shape or form. So today we're gonna to be talking about a positive sense of self-worth, learning how to say no, mm. even especially when you're overwhelmed and you can't look in the mirror and say out loud, I am enough. So that's what we're going to look at. So Leah, take it from there. Where are we going today? Well, you know, it's it's funny because, um, you know, if you look at me now, I'm very centered, I'm very zen, I'm very calm. But, you know, back in 2007, before I met Kathleen, before I learned this system, I was kind of a wreck. You know, I was a little bit of a rageaholic, I would say. I was working for a woman who was one of the top 10 attorneys in the nation under 40. So she was, I was in Silicon Valley. She was go, 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 go. I was go, 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 go. And my life was completely out of balance. And then I learned um, meditation techniques from Kathleen using animals to help support you. But here's the thing, because I was go, 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 my mind going a thousand miles, I could not meditate. Five minutes literally seemed like five hours, but there was one meditation that we learned that you just say three times in the morning. It's like, it's like a mantra uh, in a way, but it's a, a simple meditation. And that literally changed my life. And it really gave me the tools to just find that calm in the center of all the craziness that's going on. Because we both know as women, we will give and give and give until we're depleted. Mm -hmm. And that's really unhealthy. Yeah, you better believe it. And again, just using that word, and I've taught meditation for years and taught, you know, mind body connection and mindfulness and all of that using all different kinds of phrases. But when people hear that meditation word, they go, oh, 
I can't meditate because they think they need to go sit on a mountain, cross-legged, not have another thought in their mind. Right. And, and, and then they fail if they can't do it for whatever, however period of time they think it is. And you're saying, you know, five minutes, I get it. And there are still some days today where five minutes is like, whoa, it's not clicking today. And, and again, from these conversations, this is where Leah and I decided to do this. So this is all about coming up with simple hacks for you. And again, we all have to get started in some way, shape or form. And we're, if we give you, if we do the fire hose technique and give you too much, you aren't going to do anything. So Absolutely. we would much rather give you little bite-sized pieces that you can do something with and run with it. So what, what is that meditation? So it's, it's called in, in all forms of Reiki, they have it and they're called the precepts, but really they're kind of like an instruction for life. So the precepts are for today only. And so for today only is a very Buddhist concept, right? You only have this moment. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may not come. So for today only, and, and in this moment for today, you can do anything, right? And so it's for today only do not anger, do not worry, be humble, be honest, and show compassion to yourself and others. So you hear that, you go, don't be angry. I mean, of course you're going to get angry, right? And so what it means is, you know, for today only, do not anger. Well, you're going to get angry, but are you going to carry your anger? And the same with worry. Worry is distraction. It's fear. We can let go of worry in this moment. And being honest means to be honest to who you truly are. So many times we're trying to be so much to other people and we're not really true to who we are. So that's what being honest is. Being humble, showing gratitude, right? Letting go of our ego, knowing that we don't have all the answers and then showing compassion to ourselves which, you know, as women, a lot of us are just, we give, 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 give till we're depleted. So we have to show compassion to ourselves, treat ourselves like a child, and then we can show true compassion to others. And I love this because when you're like, let's say you're stuck in traffic and you're just like, oh gosh, you're getting, you find yourself getting so angry, so frustrated, just for today only, you know, and you recite the precepts and it really helps to bring it sound. I mean, it's so passive and it's just words, right? But there's something about this that's really magical and it's really in a circle, right? So if you get angry, you show yourself compassion and you bring yourself back into that circle of this meditative space. If you get worried, you show yourself compassion and you bring yourself back. So it's this really beautiful circle of going inward and it's, literally like a minute you say it three times in the morning and three times at night and you say it throughout your day and it is literally life-changing there is so much power in this and through this we start to uncover our true light our true essence mm -hmm. because we can stop in the middle of all this anger center ourselves and see it for what it truly is and most of the time it's not even about us it's about somebody else right and that's what this gives us. It gives us clarity of thought and gives us strength and grounding. It's very, very true. That, well, that that is also, and I'm nodding, and and because I again, this is my philosophy as well. And as a Reiki master, this was part of my learning as well. So let's go to a break, and I'm going to come back and and tell you talk a little bit more about this and give some more depth to some of these things and maybe some other ideas that can help you as you work through this because it might sound like pie in the sky right now, but again, we'll talk about why it works the way it works. Be be back in a moment. Hi, and welcome back to Awareness to Action. And today I'm Joan Marlowe, of course, and I'm Joan Marlowe every day. And today we've got Leo De Leah DeRosio with me again, and we're talking about providing you tools, some simple hacks that can help bring you calm and bring you a way that we can start getting rid of all the things that are keeping your light hidden and so that you can start living your best life. So Leah spoke about the precepts. And the precepts, again, as I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Reiki practitioner, a Reiki master. And when I took my Reiki one class, I was a very, 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 very broken woman. I was broken spiritually, emotionally, physically. It was not a good situation at all. And, you know, as we say in the Reiki world, did I find Reiki or Reiki found me? The jury is out, but all I know is that it changed my life. 
And another thing that, that if you listen to me at all, you also know that I'm a lifelong learner and a forever teacher. And I love to learn. And when I'm told to do something in a classroom, I just do it. So in my Reiki One class, my instructor said, for the next 21 days, you go home and you practice the precepts again in the morning and at night. And, you know, you do self Reiki because it's one of the beautiful things about Reiki is that there's a health self-healing component to it. And so I, you know, at first did all these things and whatever else, and I could feel myself changing. And so it circles back to this whole philosophy about awareness. And it's now saying, I'm now acknowledging that this is making a difference for me. And again, it's late and it's many, many years later, as I continue to grow in my lessons and my learning and my experiences that I, and, and learning from others, you know, my clients and my students and Leah, I'm sure you're in the same boat, that we find that these thing, things keep coming up. And so again, it's training our, our brains are meant to have something in them. Otherwise we'd be brain dead, but we get to choose what goes up there. And so these precepts are perfect because they are so dang simple. And I actually pulled out a page from, from my original Reiki manual, as a matter of fact, and where it says, you know, um, just for today, free of anger. And it said that anger comes from unmet expectations and may be acknowledged openly or it may be hidden, but it's always destructive and exhausting. Learn to tolerate life's frustrations and difficulties and to be open to compromise as a way to resolve conflicts. And I like those explanations because I need a little bit more because you know words are words. And as we talk about many, many times in the show, the operational definitions are very important. So that helped me to understand this anger. And I didn't think I was an angry person. But when you look also at the world and saying you have a choice between responding or reacting over these years, my choice is I'd rather respond than to react mm -hmm. because that's a much calmer mode and worry. Oh goodness. I do a whole class about trying to get rid of worry. Worry is connected to the need to control the outcome of an unknown future. And we all know how well that works out for us, right? <laughs> Let's spend those nights awake, etc. Worry never improves the situation, but it can create health problems. Focus on what you can do rather than on what you cannot do was the explanation for that. And doing your work honestly, develop a positive attitude towards types of work, fulfill your responsibilities with diligence, integrity, efficiency, and effectiveness. And that's a marvelous way to be as well. Mm -hmm. So anything to add to that? What, what were your pieces and parts? And it's sort of like using a, how do mantras work? Well, mantra is just something that helps bring mindfulness, right? So if we're, we're saying the mantra is all is well, all is well, all is well, which is another really great mantra to do because all is ultimately well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that like you said about the precepts is it, it brings that mindfulness. So when we're practicing them three times in the morning and three times at night, then throughout the day, you're going to find that when you get angry, you immediately are aware of it. Where a lot of times we're going through without being aware of what we're feeling, how we're feeling, we're just react, react, react. Whereas the precepts really bring us back to that space of, oh, I'm getting angry. I need to calm down. I have a tool now. And for me, that's what it was. It was like, oh, I have a tool for this. I have a tool for this. I love tools. I love hacks because like I said, my mind is going a million miles a minute and doing a quiet meditation, even like the Calm app you know, my mind will start to go because, because now I have peace, right? I have quiet. So now my mind just, Oh, I can go out here. But when we have these precepts, it actually goes, Hey, you're getting angry. Let's calm down. Let's like go to that grounded place. And that's where the precepts bring us. And that's really the power in it is it's bringing your awareness to your emotions. And now you can see that emotion. And once you can see it and step back from it, then you can change it. That is so true. Again, when it's something that's nebulous and it's just falling out of your mouth and you mm -hmm. aren't you aren't part of it, 
And so many, again, especially when you get angry, again, they say you get blinded by the anger and you don't even know what you're doing and things just fall out of your mouth. And, and, and that you also then cause hurt and harm and destruction to not only to yourself, but also to anything in your wake. And look at how you might have destroyed relationships or whatever that were important to you. And you didn't even give them an opportunity. And how do you, how do you go back and fix? So this mindset is just so much better to look at saying, again, looking at that uh, like attracts like and positive attracts positive. When, and I can speak for myself, when, when these kinds of things are part of your life, you attract those same kinds of people into your life. That like-mindedness, that like-mindedness is there as well. And one thing I like about the precepts on the compassion part, right? Show compassion to yourself and to others. A lot of times we think of compassion as pity or, um, you know, we need to be doing more, right? But compassion is also about setting boundaries. You, sometimes we have to make that compassionate hard line, right? And um, we can't always be stepping in for other people. That is not what compassion is. Compassion is saying, yes, I am. I can be an empathetic witness to what you're going through. I don't have to change it because when we step in and we try to fix things or change things for people, we're really saying you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not strong enough, whatever it is. So the precepts really help us to be aware of when we're being compassionate and when to set our boundaries to know that, you know what, that's their path. I don't need to step in. I can show them compassion. I can be an empathetic witness to what they're going through, but it's not up to me to change that. And I love that about them because so many times we are the caregiver. We are the person that's going to step in. Oh, let me fix this. Let me fix this. Mm -hmm. And the precepts really make us aware of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I, you know, I'm loving hearing you talk about this because it is a different perspective and you're using different words than I have become so accustomed to. And again, I love sharing with students and clients and whatever, I love giving a variety of thoughts. And then you choose what you think is going to work best for you in your world. But when you have this little, you know, this little black bag of ideas or thoughts, you can pull and go, whoops, I'm going to pull this one out right now and, and you're going to use this because it seems more. And, and, and again, when you are in a calm mode, you know, what's falling out of your mouth. And the other thing that I have found over the years is the power of the pause. Letting that little bitty pause before something falls out. And again, it might seem like it's going to take forever, but it's a snap couple of, not even, not even a second, it's worth the time where you just do that pause and you let it go through and you say, I've got to change my mind on that. And it happens like that. But it's that power of the pause that you give it a couple of a couple of blinks and say, I'm going to choose a better way to approach this or better, better words to use because and everybody has different perspectives. And then taking a moment and observing what the reaction is going to be or what the response is going to be. And then you can make a determination of whether or not you need to step in and give more of an explanation especially when you're trying to create boundaries. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and with that pause too, you can say, is this mine or is it theirs? That's very right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it's theirs, it's theirs. And, and if they're happy with it, go with it. Mm -hmm. And unless someone's asking you for that help or support, you don't have any right to be in that zone at all. Right. This is what my feeling is definitely my feeling, but we, you know, we're strongly recommending you just give this a try. And what we'll do is I will include the precepts in our show notes. Maybe that's what we'll do mm -hmm. so that you have them handy for you. And, and then you can print them out, put them on the, on the bathroom mirror, put them in the inside of your purse, put them on the steering wheel of the car. I mean, in the beginning, you do that all over the place. And then eventually it just becomes natural, but also watch how your body changes over time as you are applying these things. Yeah, so, it's really like magic. I mean, for me, it was magic. It's the difference between night 
and day, just that, just saying those precepts and, and they're so simple and you can take one precept, like, you know, oh, for today only do not anger for today only do not anger and just really bring yourself. You don't have to recite them all every single time, but yeah, mm -hmm. very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. So I hope I hope you enjoy that that thought and that idea. And please let us know too. Uh, we'll be giving our contact information. Let us know how you're doing with this, because again, we're 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 creating content for you. It's worked for us, and we love to share. And and again, if it can work with you, that's all that matters to us. Again, helping you create your best life. So for now, let's go for a break, and we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back. Joan Marlowe, Awareness to Action, and my guest today is Leah D'Ambrosio. And we're talking about providing you some hacks that can help uh, you create your best life and help you get into a flow of meditating or thinking, po keeping positivity in the forefront of your mind and just helping your body uh, be as well as it can be. And also to bring in things that you want. And that's what we were just talking about on break. As far as another element of importance is to be very specific. Sometimes we constant, sometimes we we think we know what we want, but we aren't firm enough in our beliefs. And then things don't happen because we're telling ourselves it's not going to happen. So we almost have to get out of our own way. So Leah, I want to talk a little bit about that and how that rolls into the precepts. Oh yeah, because I, I feel like with the precepts, you're in flow, right? But even then, like here, I've been doing this for years. You know, I've been doing this, what, 14 years. So a couple of years ago, when I was looking for an apartment, I found an apartment that I thought I loved, even though I had told the universe, I want to be, I want to view because I work from home and I want to be close to the water. I found an apartment downtown Portland and I really wanted it and I didn't get it. And I literally just was bawling, crying. I needed to get out of my current, you know, my living situation at the time. And I was so upset and I really had to stop and go, wait a second. Okay. I told the universe what I wanted and I've got to trust. So I kept looking at different apartments and none of them were what I liked. And then finally, the one that I do have now, that's got this beautiful view, as you know, Joan, you came and saw it. It's a million dollar view. It's by oh, the water. Yeah. It's oh a complete God. waterfront. I wouldn't look at it because I kept telling myself it's too expensive. I wouldn't even like allow myself to even look. And finally, out of desperation, I went, okay, I'm just going to go tour it. And it was crazy. It was right below my price point that I wanted to pay. The view was incredible. And when I went home to think about it, the manager of the apartment complex said, hey, somebody else just came in to look at this. Do you want this? And they never do that. And so because I was more in flow and I was open, right? I was open to what the universe wanted to give me. Then I actually got it, but I almost missed it because I was dragging my feet, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to trust that the universe has our best interests in mind. It always does. If you think in your life about little miracles that have happened, it's because the universe is always shooting for you, but you have to be specific. You have to say to the universe, you can't go, Hey universe, I want a pizza. And then it sends you a pizza with anchovies and you go, wait a second. I don't I don't like anchovies. Well, you weren't specific, right? So we have to be specific. And I think as women, we don't like to be specific and say, yes, I want this. I deserve this, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so true. I mean, and, you know, as I'm, as I'm listening and, and, you know, the words that I was using in the beginning talking about and how you're repeating them now about the importance of patience, the importance of trust and the importance we're, we're afraid to be disappointed because I think so many of us have had our hearts set on things or whatever, or we were told we couldn't have it. And so uh, we were told no so many, for women, we were told no so many times for whatever reason under the sun. And we believed that part. So this is almost like a retooling for us. And it does, it takes that patience, it takes that trust. And it takes that element of being very, very clear in your mind. And again, if you are so busy taking care of other people, you don't have time to create those dreams, to bring about the reality. You don't do it. And again, that's another thought to take away from this show is taking that time, whether it be in that meditative space. Now you've gone through the precepts. Maybe you can find some quiet where you actually sit and you think about what it is you do and you don't want and make those lists. I mean, it's okay to make... 
write things down because there's power in writing as well. The action that's behind that has meaning. Everything you do has meaning if you believe it does. And so you aren't just doing or taking empty actions. Everything has, there's a cause and effect here as well. And I love, you know, talking about manifesting and, and whatever, and people say, but I really want that Maserati, Maserati in my driveway. And I go out every morning, it's not there. And they go, you know, what's wrong with me? And I go, oh, you're missing the point. We, we, have, we, we have some work to do here because you, you have to, ha and you have to have a belief in yourself. And again, this whole idea of what this show is about is having that light shine for you so that your, your light goes out and welcoming the people that might be able to help you and support you in your efforts. And they might not even be people that you know now. They might not be people in your life right now because you don't know. And like you said, I was closed off to whatever it was. Well, and I think that you just nailed it, Joan. I think journaling, right? When we write our lists down, it doesn't cost you anything to daydream. It doesn't cost you anything to write down what you want. And I think that that's so important that we have to create these lists because like you said, then people will start coming in. Like, right, you tell the universe, okay, well, if you do want that Maserati, well, first of all, ask yourself, why do you want that Maserati? Is it the status? Is it the actual car? What is it about this Maserati that you want? And then if you truly do want it, then put it out there. I want this Maserati and start thinking about ways, write down ways you could get that Maserati, mm -hmm. no matter how crazy it seems, you know, win the lottery, but it's still a way to get that Maserati. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we don't do enough. We don't either like, like I know you, we had said in the break, talking about vision boards, right. Mm -hmm. Journaling, whatever your creativity or your creative way to do that would be. Um, I know I, I love doing vision boards because it's that, you know, so visual, but journaling is also excellent. It's list, list, list. Right, right, right. And it's funny. So, you know, to prep for the show, I, I, I dug out one of the, and this is, a, this is a clean journal waiting for me. And the title on the, on the cover is, and sometimes they're just because this, this was the little journal that I had um, from, from my workshop this weekend. So all it was a plain little notebook, nothing fancy. This is a little bit fancier. And on the front of it is, we are such stuff as dreams are made of, dot, dot, dot. Is that true or is that true? I mean, yeah. because we don't take the time to dream. And many times people might've had a dream and they thought they weren't worthy of that dream. But you have, you have to give it life. You have to breathe life into it. And through the act of journaling, et cetera, it's going, it's going to happen. And an element of, and, and Leah and I spoke about this when, when she and I first started working on the first show, and we talked about the, the four A's or the, the, well, the five A's now, but she really, really pounded on the idea that we need accountability in here. And, and since that time, I've really thrown account. We have authenticity. Yes, that's my fifth A. And my sixth A that Leah added to it is accountability. And that's very true. That's where the beauty of masterminding comes in because you've got people, again, that you trust, know, like, and trust. You are working with them. They are helping you and they're supporting you. And that creative nature, again, when you bring community together, they're there. And one of the things that I said to my group over the weekend was we were each asked to write down something, three things that we were going to do when we get home. And I offered to be the scribe and to say, okay, does everybody agree? Send me all your three things as long as you want to be open about it. And then we're going to share it out to the group. And so we sort of have created our own little cocooning masterminding kind of group that came together purely by accident, purely. And again, there are no coincidences in this world. Everything happens for a reason and that's what we have to go forward with. And um, so, so that's another piece of it. But the other thing, 
what, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And I don't mean to interrupt, but I just want to comment on that. The, there's so much power in that, in sharing your top three things that you want to accomplish, like in, let's say in the next year, or even in the next month. And now you all know it for each other. And you can then check in with each other and say, how are you doing on that? Because a lot of times, especially like with vision boards or something, we write it down, we, we make a vision board, we do whatever, and then we just put it away. And that's not how you manifest. You have to keep it real every single day. You've got to keep looking at it and you've got to keep working on it. So that's beautiful that you all have this yeah. mastermind where you're accountable to each other. Yeah. 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 And again, when someone stumbles, we can say, how can we help you? Mm -hmm. I mean, you almost, you created this sisterhood, this community and whatever. And that's what it's all about because we all want the other one to, to succeed. Nobody wants anyone to fail. And we all, and everybody is at a different point in their life right now, which was very, very unique, very unique. And lots of, lots of transitions, <laughs> lots of transitions happening in life. And those always have surprises around every corner. And so it's nice. And, and we don't have to tell the story again to anybody else. We now have those pieces and parts because sometimes having to re rehab or recreate those stories it's as if you're going through it all over again and you whatever climbing you've done you now fall down but one last point before we go to break this morning I had a client and um, we were talking about whether because he was saying and he's a young, a young gentleman and he was saying that he wants to be successful and I said what does that mean and he said I want to be happy I said what does that mean and he says well you know, he just, he just started a job working in retail and he says, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. And I said, okay, now you know what you don't want to do. Now we need to talk about what it is you do want to do. And Leah, when you said about the Maserati and why do you need that Maserati? One of the beautiful things that I learned way back when in the world of total quality management was when something is awry, ask the question, why five times? Mm -hmm. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? And dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and you will find root cause. And I find that when I do my calm app in the morning, because I actually do the little writing and I'll start out one place and then I drill down, drill down, drill down, drill. And I am shocked <laughs> by, the, by the end of whatever this is. And I go, isn't that interesting? Because I was fooling myself. Yeah. You have to be aware. And that's why an accountability, a partner is great because they'll, they'll push you. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for your listeners, like, let's say they didn't go to a yoga retreat, they may not have that, but they do have people in their lives. Find a good friend that you could be completely honest with. And that will be honest, you know, with you um, and have them be your accountability partner, mm -hmm. you know, just share your dreams and then keep each other on track. That's so important. Yeah. Yep. That's very, 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 very true. So let's go to break right now and then we'll come back and talk more about this. And welcome back. I'm Joan Marlowe and this is Awareness to Action. My guest is Leah Nebrosio and we've been taking you on a romp through looking at finding some simple hacks you can bring into your life that you can incorporate into your life. One of the last things we were talking about there was about journaling. And again, what I wrote back when, when we were doing the talking points here is using it as a stream of consciousness to let yourself go to explore your imperfections, accepting and growing from there, because it is, it's looking at, and we are all on this earth and we're imperfect. There's, there's no two ways about it. And we have to accept those imperfections as well. And so it's, it's also about being vulnerable. So, and then you just grow from there, but yet also be aware that you're doing the growing because if you're doing it, because the universe also wants to make sure that what it's providing you, you're saying, thank you. And so gratitude is all part of this as well in some way, shape or form. What else, Leah? Well, we've covered a lot. And I think that one thing um, also about like when you're journaling or when you're doing your vision board or when you're, you're asking the universe for what you want, don't, you know, we're, I think we're raised thinking that negative thoughts or negative things are like, like, let's say like you're told be realistic, right? That that is more realistic than dreaming big. 
So mm-hmm. like, you know, people say, oh, you're being a Pollyanna or you're, you're dreaming too big, but there's nothing. And I think that really, as we've grown up the way we were raised, it's like, oh, you can't be that, or you can't do that. But now in the time we live in, you can be anything you want. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you're journaling that you really need to let yourself dream big, think big, Mm -hmm. and know that it's realistic, know that it's okay, know that you deserve it and you can get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so true. That is so true. So what might a day look like using these three hacks? Well, for me, because I use accountability. So for me, it's before I even get out of bed, right? I just say the precepts because it's an easy thing. I'm in bed to say it. And then I get up and then I text my accountability partner. So my accountability partner and I, we just text like, these are the three things I need to get done today. And they're not the three most urgent things. They're the three most important things. The most important things that are going to help me to get to my goals. And they could be little, they could just be even like, I'm going to, to eat better today. I'm going to, you know, journal. It doesn't have to be big things like, you know, oh, I'm going to contact 10 people. It can be anything. And then at the end of the day, or even the next day, we'll celebrate our wins. You know, oh, I was so great. I ate really well yesterday. Here's my three. So I do that. And then um, I journal every day as well. I write down at the end of the day, I'll write down what I need to get done tomorrow. So I can just kind of do that brain dump so I can have a really good rest. And then I go to bed and do my three precepts again. Yeah. That, and that's talk about creating flow. When Leah talked about flow in the beginning, some of you might've said, I have no idea what the devil that means. What she just explained now is this flow. And it's all about these little habits that we have that we create and therefore are good. And we don't even have to think about them. We just do them automatically. That, that stuff is on autopilot, but yet we take a conscious effort because you have to be consciously involved in that to to be able to go to that next level. So again, as always, I'm always available to you. Leah's always available. So Leah, share with our share with our listeners how they can get a hold of you. They can always email me um, at Leah at shelter animal. Reiki and Reiki spelled R-E-I-K-I association.org. I'm always available through there. Um, I also have a cannabis business, um, but you know, the, the Leah at shelter animal Reiki association is a great one.org to get me. Okay. 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 And for me, my business is peaceful, easy healing. My website is peacefullyhealing.com, and there's a ton of information on there that supports a lot of what we talk about here, including some blogs and whatever that talk about the power of the pause, as well as other things related to meditation and what that might look for look like for you. And to reach me, it's Joan at peacefullyhealing.com as well. And, and um, there was another thought that I had that just came in and now it went away. Poof, gone. <laughs> I love how that happens. It made sense in the moment. Um, but again, going, going back to that whole awareness part of it, all I know about celebrating, there is an important element in celebrating. Mm-hmm. And whether it be that, again, way back when, when we were taught how to create to-do lists, and I also love what you said, it might not be big behemoth things, but they're things that are going to help you And that eating well is perfect. Maybe walking. I mean, I wear my Fitbit, so it's maybe walking a little bit more. So I achieve a certain goal of steps and I literally I'll walk around the house or I'll, I'll get on my, my mini trampoline and walk for a little bit to get my steps in because that to me is a goal and having that check mark is just a way to celebrate as well. And so, because we have to do that, having these, having a counter account, I call them accounter buddies also at time, your accountability buddies are very important. And what Leah also said, some of these people, they have to, and please excuse my French, they've got to call your shit on it. Because (laughs) if you, if you're saying you're going to do it and you aren't very being serious about it, they are not going to take this process seriously as well. And you, they're going to lose faith in you and you don't want that to happen. So that's just, again, because you've, everything is built on relationship too. We're talking about now a relationship with yourself, but we're also talking about a relationship with close in people that you again, know, like, and trust in that are willing to give you the tough information 
as well as giving you the add a girl or the add a boy as well, or good job, or maybe saying, hey, have you thought about doing something else? Definitely doing something else. Um, and one thing I would like to explain too, if, if, if you folks have been watching my videos at all, you might be noticing there's something different on my hand. This, this, this came out of my uh, wellness retreat in yoga and lot in this, I'd never had a henna tattoo, but this now is, is, is a big reminder. Lots of times I'll tell clients to have like a touchstone of some part, part like you've got a necklace or an earring that you touch or you look down at a ring to remind you, but this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful henna is now my reminder about all the things that came from that weekend that I was in, um, in Seaside um, in, in Oregon. And um, that's, that's just really important. So again, that's, we, we, need, we need these extra hacks on top of hacks to help us do better. But again, always remember to, to acknowledge yourself. Absolutely. Anyway, you've got anyway, to do those celebrations. Sorry, Joan, you've got to do those celebrations. That is so key. I'm so glad you, you brought that up because that is the magic sauce. Mm -hmm. Celebrate, J dance around your house, do it. Like if, if you just go out for a walk, a, a five minute walk, you come home and you celebrate because that dopamine will help you to continue. That is oh so true. Again, when I completed, when I completed a, 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 a task or whatever, I make myself a special little cup of tea or whatever until the five o'clock hour comes and we have wine. But <laughs> it's, but again, you, we have to celebrate in some way, shape or form. And we're human. Give yourself a break all the time because we are human, definitely human. And that's, that is first and foremost also. Anything Absolutely. else? No, that's it. I love this. And I really hope that everyone can use these, you know, also just a really quick hack on the accountability. You're going to list your important things. Also list your wins because otherwise it starts to become like, oh, I didn't get that done. Oh, I did. And you start to beat yourself up. So you've got to celebrate those wins. You know, I drank more water than I usually did. Um, I got outside. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be huge. When you journal, it doesn't have to be a whole page. It can be two lines this happened. I'm excited. I'm going to do this tomorrow. Um, you know, make it easy. That's why I love the precepts, right? Great, easy hack for meditation, yet super powerful. All of these steps, super powerful. And again, so Leah, one more time, your website. It's um, shelter animal Reiki, R E I K I association.org. Okay. And mine is peacefullyhealing.com. So we look forward to having you visit our websites as well. We look forward to hearing from you and I'll have the information in the, in the show notes and listening to the show. You can go back on to transformation talk radio and find us in the, uh, find us in the um, uh, archives. And again, on my website, you can come and visit me as well. I've got a special radio page so you can come back and listen to all of my shows as well. And I so appreciate that. And we love, I love the feedback. Thank you. And I'm so honored, Leah, to spend time with you again. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your gifts that you've provided me. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, Joan. It's been such a pleasure. I just love this. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining this Awareness to Action episode. Join me next time for more inspiring stories that will shift your perspective and allow you to see pathways toward a more fulfilling life. It doesn't come overnight, but with a positive outlook and a will to keep moving forward, you will get there and it will be worth every twist and turn along the way. A willingness to learn from this experience is key. If plan A doesn't work, remember, you have plans B through Z to continue your journey. With each adjustment, you're one step closer to turning a possibility into a reality. For more information about me, or to work with me personally, visit peacefullyhealing.com.